What is up everybody? My name is Cameron. Welcome to the channel and thank you for clicking on today's video. And today we are down here in the Galveston Bay area doing a little bit of bank fishing for redfish, speckled trout, and flounder, the inshore special around here. It is early October right now. We finally had our first cool front of the year. The weather was in the 60s yesterday and this morning as well feels great outside and I know the fish are going to be biting. October is one of the best months for fishing around here. Beautiful clear skies, nice water, low winds, everything that we want whenever we come out here. Bait scattered all around and that's how you know that we're going to get into some fish. But I do want to give a special shout out to the North Jetty Bait Camp over here on Bolver, located at the North Jetty of course. They're open seven days a week and they have live shrimp every single day. For those of you that come over here to Bolver and are familiar with the area, you know that it can be hard to find bait sometimes especially if you don't want to drive really far away from the ferry and go down towards Crystal Beach. And they did not ask me to say anything, but we went in there, we got a pint of shrimp. They were super lively, really good sized shrimp. And that's always great whenever you buy some shrimp and they're not half dead in the bucket, which actually happens quite often. So we got some live shrimp and now we're out here trying to catch some reds. We got some bottom rods right here and hoping that will get us some slot reds to take home for dinner. But y'all stick with it, stay tuned. We're gonna give this spot about 20, 30 minutes. If we don't get a bite here, we're gonna move over and go try to specifically target flounder and speckled trout. That's all I got for y'all now. Let's see what we hook into. Okay, so we have ourselves a nice live shrimp right here. Perfect size for a slot red, honestly. And I am throwing a single dropper. So I have a two ounce weight on the bottom. You can use one or two ounce depending on the conditions. Today, I could get away with one or two. It really does not matter. I'm just taking my shrimp, hooking them to the head, making sure not to hit him in any of the dark spots in his head because that'll kill him. Just like that. Now we're just gonna sling him out. And y'all don't mind the sound that you're about to hear come off this reel, but we got our shrimp here, 20 pound fluorocarbon leader and a circle hook right there, perfect size. Let's go ahead and sling it out. There we go. Reeling all of our slack, loosen up the drag so it doesn't get yanked out of the holder. And now we just wait. Hopefully it doesn't take too long to hook into a nice fish, but let's see what happens. Well, we got bit here, but I believe that we missed the bite and I think that it took our bait. No, we still have a little bit of shrimp left. Let's see what happened. Well, it took almost the whole shrimp and left just a head and one little knuckle of meat. So. We're gonna go ahead and get another one and cast it back out. Okay, we got another shrimp right here, bait number two. And we're actually gonna take this one and hook it through the body, just in case we get another bite so it doesn't miss the hook. So I'm gonna hook it through here. Whenever I hook up a shrimp through the body, you can see these last few knuckles, they have that little brown stripe on the top. And that is a harder part of the shell and it keeps your hook from sliding out a lot more. If you just hook it right up here, it can easily pull out, but you hook it there and it kind of holds it a little bit better. So. Hook it to the body. Got a hook exposed just like that. Let's see what we can catch. So I casted right up on the corner of a reef out here. So we have a channel, then there's a little sandbar, then there's another channel, and then there's a oyster reef out there. Fish love structure, so anytime you can cast near a reef or Anywhere where there's a bunch of rocks or just any sort of structure, your chances of catching something always go up. There we go, back in the rod holder, and now we wait again. Let's go. Oh, he pulled off. Guys, my rod almost just shot straight into the water here. No. Finally, we had a good bite. That bait was only cast out for a minute or so. We're gonna get another bait and try again. Okay, bait number three. Another good size shrimp here. We're gonna cast it right back in that same spot. I don't know how I missed that fish. It was such a good bite. It hit it twice actually. And the second bite it just took off. So get it right back in that same spot. Usually here, whenever those redfish start running through, they're gonna start running through pretty thick. And you're gonna have a little bite window of maybe 45 minutes to an hour, and then it slows down again. But we put it right in that same spot. Make sure our drag is plenty loose because we really don't want to lose our rod here. And now we wait again. Fingers crossed, we can be lucky enough to get another bite. Okay, well, it's been about 30 to 45 minutes. I had that one bite, as y'all saw, that I somehow missed. Honestly, I don't know how, because it pulled it and it was just pulling line. And then I went over there, grabbed the rod, and, and it popped off. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to reel these in and we're going to move over to our other side of the bridge 
and see if we can get on some trout or flounder or maybe even redfish over there. But it's not working out here. We're getting hit by a bunch of bait stealers. We're gonna move over there and hopefully it'll be a little bit better. Y'all stay tuned. Ho 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 ho! Ho ho ho! A little bit closer, right there. Absolutely swallowed it. All they gotta be is 15. Oh, he bit me. Let's see. That's a keeper. Let's go. Let's go. Heck nice yeah. keeper fish right there, girl. Good, uh, 15 and a half inch keeper flounder. We're gonna go ahead and unhook this guy. As you can see, he absolutely swallowed it. The lure is nowhere to be seen. So we're just gonna cut the line, tie on again, and then see if there's some more out here. Didn't take too long, about third, fourth cast, and I got this thing. Okay, y'all, so we just caught that flounder. I re-rigged up here. I got some 20 pound fluorocarbon leader, a one fourth ounce jig head, and then a gulp swimming mullet. This is a pink one. I caught that one on a different color. I'm not sure exactly what the color is called, but it's like grayish brown. There we go, that's all you do. Hook them up like that. Really any color works. Some days they do prefer certain colors over the other. I have a little rock crab trying to grab my, or a stone crab trying to grab my flounder that I let him bleed out right there. But some days, some colors do work better than others, but you never know until you start fishing. Pink is always a good one to go with. So is chartreuse and also white. Those would be my three favorites. But we just got this on here, one fourth ounce jig head. We're gonna let it sink down. And then all we do is just drag it back like that. Reel in the slack, drag it, reel in the slack. And the whole goal here is to drag it right over a flounder's head. And we know they're here because we just caught one. So we're gonna do this for a while and see if we can hook some more. Are you making money? Yeah. So I'm just casting into the middle of this current right here. We have a drop off about probably about 10 feet in front of me it goes down and then there's another oyster reef out there i'm casting just in between those two letting it hit the bottom and then as i showed you a minute ago slowly dragging it and i'm carefully feeling the bottom as i'm dragging it and remembering what i feel and where i cast if you feel it bouncing on shell little snags and stuff like that that's always good a lot of times those flounder lay right on the edges of that oyster at least that's what i've noticed from my personal experience but there's quite a bit of bait sealers. Usually when you use a brighter colored gulp, like a pink one or an orange one or something like that, the bait sealers go crazy over it. Versus if you're using more neutral color. Not to say that they won't eat that too, but I've always noticed whenever I use a pink or a chartreuse gulp, the bait sealers just go crazy. But we're just dragging and see if we come across another flounder. I didn't catch anything else on the gulp, but I brought the cast net down, threw it out, caught a little pinfish, casted that guy out. I honestly did not even record because I had very low expectations. I had no hope in that working. I never have good luck on pinfish. But, of course, as it would have it, it got yanked straight down, huge hit. And I missed him somehow. Either way though, I just threw the cast net again, caught this little guy, which is not a pinfish. I'm not even sure exactly what this guy is, but he is about the same exact size as the pinfish that just got bit. I'm gonna cast him in the same exact spot. So about right out there. And we're just gonna let him float on that cork. That cork's about three and a half, four feet down. We're gonna see what happens. What we really wanna do is catch some finger mullet, but we're having trouble finding them. And throw them out here on a bottom rig. I caught one finger mullet in the cast net and Caleb has that thing on a Carolina rig right now. Oh, he got bit again. I felt him pull. Oh wait, is it on there? Yep. What is going on? It keeps missing it. Probably took my bait again. What is going on? But what I was saying is Caleb has that mold on a Carolina rig right now with the tail cut off, trying to catch a slot red. And I, as you just saw, got bit again on this little bait. And he missed it, and I bet he took my bait. Let's see. Yep, took the bait again. So we're gonna throw the cast net some more, try to catch whatever we really can and throw it out here, because it looks like they're feeding really hard right now. We have the sunset, outgoing tide, and the fish are starting to bite. So let's get to it before we lose too much light. Okay, y'all, I just caught some more bait. These are the same things I caught a minute ago. Once again, I don't know exactly what they are. So if you do, leave it in the comments down below. 
but they're about the same size as a little baby pinfish, except they don't have the stripes or the pointy little fins. So if you know what these are, leave it in the comments down below. Crazy looking little things. Good baits though, apparently. All right, y'all. Well, it has gotten dark outside on us. The only fish that we caught today was that nice flounder, which I'm actually perfectly fine with. One fish is better than none, and just being out here is a blessing in itself. But we caught that one good flounder to take home, so we will be doing a catch and cook. We were gonna stay and try to catch some redfish after dark and keep on fishing, but uh, the mosquitoes came out and they were really mad at us tonight because we got absolutely covered in them. I probably had about 30 on my leg at one time. So we ran out of there, hopped in the truck. I will see y'all back at the house to clean up that flounder. Okay, so here's that one keeper flounder from yesterday. We're about to clean this guy up. I'm gonna show you how to do it and then we're gonna head inside and I'm gonna show y'all a really cool recipe. But y'all take a look at all the fish on this filet table right here. So we actually went out again today and we just absolutely tore up the fish. And if you wanna see that video, make sure to hit the subscribe button and stay tuned because this will be coming out in about one week from the time this video comes out. So let's go ahead and clean this guy up and then head into the kitchen. Now flounder have four fillets on him. You get one off of each side on the top and one off of each side on the bottom. And what I mean by each side is that there's a little line right here, the lateral line. You can see it on the bottom because it's white and the line is brown right there. See that? Just a little stripe. And that is the backbone. And so that's where you get two sides from. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take our flounder and I'll do it on this side first. And we're literally just gonna run our knife straight down that backbone. And as long as you follow that, it's gonna be right on the backbone. You can see after you do that, you can reach your finger in there. And I don't know if y'all can tell, but that is a little hump on the backbone. Okay, so now all we're gonna do is just take it, pick whatever side we wanna start on first. We're just gonna turn our knife and go down that side of the backbone, opening it up and pulling the flesh away. So. If you're using a stiffer fillet knife, then you really gotta get level with it or you're gonna cut to the bones because their bones are super thin. If you have a very flexible knife, then you can leave it at more of an angle and just give it that flex and it's gonna be real easy. But with a stiffer knife, you gotta really get level with it. Okay, so we're just gonna keep making cuts until we end up all the way at those fins out there. Flounder are honestly one of the easiest fish to fillet. There's really nothing to it. So, perfect flounder fillet right there. We got pretty much all that meat. And then we're gonna do the same thing to the other side of the backbone. So you can see it, we just go up and over it. Make these short little cuts to start until we get our line that we want. And you just kind of lift up and start making swipes with it. Another perfect fillet. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the top side of it. So the top, you cannot see the line. There's not an actual visible line like there was on the bottom. But if you get the right angle, which I don't know if it'll show up on camera, you can see a little divot in it. And it's right there. You can run your finger and feel it. And so you're just gonna take your knife and you're gonna cut straight down that divot. Just like that, butterfly and get open. So then we just do the same thing we do on the other side. Take our knife. Turn it slightly, get your initial cut going. And start making bigger swipes out. And the top flays are always gonna be bigger. They're about double the thickness of the bottom, at least, maybe three times. But. There you go right there. I got one little patch of bones in there. They are super thin bones. Like I said, they're easier to cut through, but that's not anything to worry about. Let me just go back down the other side and do it all over again. So for this recipe, we're not gonna be stuffing the flounder. That's obviously why we are filleting it off the bones. We're gonna be making flounder roll-ups. But if you wanted to stuff a flounder, I actually have a whole video dedicated to deboning a flounder, which I will have linked and you can go check it out if you wanna learn how to do that. Cause it is flounder season right now. The flounder are starting to move and uh, yeah. One of the most popular ways to eat a flounder is definitely stuffed. So I'll, I'll link that down after this video. Make sure you go check that one out if you want to learn how to do that. It's super simple. Not as hard as everyone makes it out to be. Oh, 
Okay, there we go. You want your flounder like that to be see-through. If it's see-through, that means you did a good job. Go ahead, discard that, and then we're just gonna take these guys off of the skin. So run your knife down, get a little place for you to hold. Flatten that knife out. Your flounder has super thin skin, so it's really easy to cut through. And you're gonna want to do it on the edge of your fillet table, so you make sure that you can get your knife really flat. Boom, perfect. Same thing to this one. I'll show y'all one last time. Flatten your knife, same as if you're doing it on a trout or something. Pull it, there we go. That right there is two perfectly good boneless, skinless flounder fillets. We're gonna finish up the other two and then we'll see you on the kitchen to cook these guys up. I guarantee it's gonna be delicious. All right, y'all, so we are back in the kitchen now and I don't know if I already said this or not, but today we're going to be making flounder roll-ups. So the cool thing about flounder roll-ups is that they are basically just stuffed flounder except individual fillets. So instead of taking that whole flounder and just pulling out the backbone and stuffing the whole thing, you completely fillet it out and then you stuff each one by itself. So right here we have our four flounder fillets, two bottom fillets and two top fillets. As you can tell, the tops are way bigger than the bottom. And we're just gonna be making this up as we go because I've never made flounder rolls before. I looked up a few different recipes and uh, I took a little bit from each one and we're just gonna be basically doing our own thing here. So. You can stuff them with whatever you like. You can do boudin, you can do spinach, seems to be very popular. You can do like a breadcrumb crab mixture like you would do a whole stuffed flounder. That is the fun part about being in the kitchen. You can get creative with it and you can do whatever you like because you're the one eating it. So today what we are going to be doing is right here I have some chopped celery, chopped onion, and then some just original smoked sausage right there that I chopped up. We're gonna be throwing this in the pan, sauteing it down with some butter, and that is what we're gonna use for our stuffing, as well as some breadcrumbs just to hold it all together. Other than that, I have a little bit of mayonnaise, a little bit of mustard right here, Dijon mustard to season it up, add a little bit extra flavor and moisture. And then we have some garlic and some seasoning, as always, whatever seasoning you want. This is just a little bit of Cajun seasoning right here. So first thing we're gonna do, let's go ahead and head over to the pan. Let's toss this butter in. That is about three or four tablespoons. So we're gonna get the bottom of that pan covered with that butter. We're gonna go straight in with all of our toppings. So we got that onion, that celery, and that sausage. We're just gonna mix it around. And I can already tell you I made like four times too much. It's gonna be spilling out on the flounder like crazy. So we're just gonna let that saute down until those onions turn translucent, until that celery gets a little bit softer, and maybe until we have a little bit of brown on that sausage. I have my oven set to 375. We are gonna be baking this in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes or just until it's all done. So let's wait for that to saute down and then we'll go on to the next step. Okay, so this has been going about three to four minutes here. We're gonna add in a little bit of garlic and then we're gonna take it off the stove after about 30 seconds. We're just gonna let the flavors come out of that garlic right there and then we'll pull it off. It does not take too long. Just mix that all together. Get everything stirred in. As you can see, that sausage is starting to brown up a little bit. That onion's starting to turn translucent. And that celery is definitely already getting soft. So it is going to cook in the oven, like I said earlier, for 15 to 20 minutes. So the onion and the celery and everything is gonna to continue to cook. But right now we're just adding a little bit of extra flavor with that butter, so. Okay, there we go. That's done. We're gonna take this off. We're gonna put it back in our container here with all that butter, because that's gonna help add moisture to the stuffing. The next thing we are gonna do is add our breadcrumbs. So you can use panko, you can use Italian breadcrumbs, or these are just plain ones. So we're just eyeballing this here. All we're trying to do is just get this to a good consistency to where it is going to hold together nicely inside that flounder. So probably about a cup and a half of breadcrumbs we got our breadcrumbs added in. Next thing we're gonna do is going with mayonnaise. Once again, just going for some moisture right here. Mayonnaise is a fat, so it's gonna add some good fatty flavor, just like that butter. So we do probably three to four tablespoons of that. And then some Dijon mustard, completely optional. I'm just gonna squeeze some of that in like that. It's gonna give some good flavor. Okay, we'll give this one last mix, maybe a little bit more mayonnaise. And then we're ready to start stuffing the fillets and rolling them up. Y'all check this out. You can see as I'm squishing it with the back of that spoon, how it's kind of sticking together. That's letting me know that it's the perfect consistency and it's gonna stay together very well in those fillets. So all we're gonna do now is take our seasoning. We're gonna season up the fillets. Give it a nice amount here. Kind of like that. 
And then we'll season the other side too after we roll it, but that's it. Now we're gonna see if this works out because as I said earlier in the video, I've never done this. Okay, so all we're gonna do is take a scoop of this, a big scoop, and we're just gonna drop it in the middle of the filet just like that. Another big scoop. Actually, you know what guys? I'm learning as we go right now. This is my first time. And I'm thinking what we can do is actually take this and like smash it down and just cover the whole filet and then just roll it like that. In my head, whenever I was thinking about flounder roll-ups, I was thinking about putting it in the middle and then rolling around it, but I think we can do this. You can take a look right here. We're gonna smush it along the whole filet. Like that. And then it'll be all intertwined with it whenever we roll it up, instead of just in one spot. All right, so let's go ahead and try to roll this. All we have here is some skewers that I cut in half because I didn't have toothpicks. And we're just gonna take our filet, we're gonna start with this big one right in the middle. I guess we're just gonna do this. Roll it. Oh, it's heavy with all that stuff on there. My hands are washed, so don't worry. Roll, 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 roll. Boom, just like that. Take our toothpick, stick it through the middle of the flounder, and we're gonna lay it crease side down. So the side that I rolled is sticking down. Just like that. Do the same thing on this one. I think we need to start from the thick side of the flays to roll them. So you get more of that breading stuck in there. Just like that. I don't even know if we have to use a toothpick to be quite honest. That's just what I read online. Smush all that in there. Roll, 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 roll. Honestly, I'm impressed right now. This is coming together really well. Move some of this extra out of the way. We'll bake it anyway and it'll be like a little crab cake, but with sausage. Okay, and the last one, super tiny one, roll it up. Okay, there we go. So a bunch of it fell out. You can see it all back here in the back corner, but that is completely fine. I think that's gonna be pretty good. I'm gonna wash my hands up. Then we're gonna season the top of these so we can get it on the outside of the filet. And we'll throw them in the oven 15 minutes and see what they look like. Let's get after it. Okay, let's throw this in. Get that timer set. Timer will start with 15 minutes, although it may take longer. Or it may only take 10 to 12 minutes, but we'll go with 15 to make sure everything's nice and cooked. And then we'll check on it. Oven's going off here. We're going to take the flounder out and take a look at it. Ooh, and that looks good. I actually did 15 minutes and then the oven went off. Hold on, this burned my hand. Let me set down and then I'll talk. I did 15 minutes and then the oven went off and then I put it back on for five more minutes and that is definitely done. So we're going to let that cool for just a second and then we're going to plate it up, try it out, tell you how good it is. Okay, let's go ahead and plate this up here. So we'll just shimmy that spatula under it. Boom, just like that. Didn't even stick it all to the bottom of that pan. I did put some olive oil on there earlier. Usually right in the middle of the plate. I'm sure this would be really good with a side of green beans or rice or something like that, but right now we're just eating straight fish. We're gonna pull our toothpick out. Bam. Y'all check that out. That looks pretty good right there. I'm ready to try it out, so let's get to it. Let's go in for the taste test right here. Get ourselves our fork. We'll break off a piece on this side. Ooh, fish is perfectly cooked. There we go, look at that. Look how white and flaky that fish is on the inside there. As well as the uh, stuffing that we made is still super moist, so let's see how it is. Flounder, everyone's favorite fish around here. Cheers. Yeah, that is super good. That pretty much is identical to a stuffed flounder. It's like I said in the beginning, it's a stuffed flounder, but individual fillets. That's just because of what I put inside of it. If you did not want it to taste like a stuffed flounder, like you wanted a completely separate recipe, you could use something like cream cheese and celery and onion versus the breadcrumbs. But hey, this is delicious. Really simple to make. 
I'm probably gonna finish this and go ahead and I might eat the whole fish, who even knows? But before we finish this, I just wanna tell you guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you would like to see next or let me know if you've made this before and what you put inside of yours and how good it was. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not already. That's all I have for you now. Until next time, peace.